And Robert, just kind of elaborating on that, you know, when you were kind of approaching the Founders trilogy, at what point did you decide, like, this needs to be a heist or incorporate heists? And I like what you said about the, the, the finding peace afterwards, because this is a trilogy and towards the end, it's like much of it is about like figuring out how to save the world, but also how to kind of find peace in this, this scenario that has gotten way bigger than they can handle. Yeah. Like I would say like first, the, the first way that I went at it was it was going to be a cyberpunk like fantasy with hacking. And then I kind of had to figure out what the main character, like who the main character was. And at first, my plan was to have her be a, like a character who just really likes stealing. Um, and right away, I was like, this is not really working, and I'm not sure why. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I settled uh, like on the idea that she was someone whose like body had been hacked, that her body had been like had used a piece uh, uh, of this magic to hack herself like in some fashion. Um, and what she's trying to do as a thief is to get the money to fix herself. She just wants to be normal. She does not want to be like this at all. And it kind of brought up a lot, uh, uh, a lot of interesting questions about how did she get this way? Why did the people in power make her this way? What does it say about uh, a city and a world like this in which they can use people like things? And what does peace look like for a person like this? Um, and it, like, is it even possible for her to actually fix herself? Um, that was, a, um, it was a great way to build a platform to jump off towards a lot of cool stuff that I wanted to talk about. I, I, so like, again, it's like a cheat code. If you can get yourself in the right position, you can do a lot of fun stuff. Yeah. And also give yourself a really cool magic system. That helps too. That's, that, <laughs> that, that's true. Cool. And uh, MJ, what about you when you're approaching uh, Among Thieves? What was your sort of framework in terms of like, this is what this story is going to be, and I want it to be a heist, or more so like, I need it to be a heist in order to make this really click? Yeah, so Among Thieves came about in a very odd way. Um, so we, we all know the, the plotter versus pantser debate, uh, and I have always been a plotter still am but i attempted to to just pants a novel right by the seat of my pants just let's figure it out as we go and it didn't work i ended up with about fifty thousand words of unusable nonsense um but that unusable nonsense happened to be set in what would become to more the world of among thieves um mm -hmm. and so actually what came first was like the magic system um and the which the magic system in Among Thieves for for those who haven't read it yet is is quite twisted. Um, there's you know only a certain number of people who have magic, and they are all kidnapped as babies and brainwashed and then like used as uh, guard dogs basically for the the elite, which is horrible. Um, so I had that piece, and then I knew of course I'm gonna want my characters to want to give a gigantic middle finger to the person that's perpetrating that system. <laughs> So what better way than to try to steal something from him, uh, something very important from him. Um, so that was kind of how the heist came around. Um, and then also, I just I love writing, like I said, thieves and rogues. And um, so I already knew I wanted to be kind of like this gritty underbelly of this society, uh, the people that don't own these humans um, and might want to stay get to the people who are responsible for that so yeah that's kind of how all of that came about for among thieves <laughs> nice i love that and leslie when you're approaching the monsters we defy you said that that six of crows was this kind of turning point where you realize like okay i could do this you know not sure how successful it's going to be but let's try it so what was your approach when you were starting that book so I had the idea that I kind of wanted to, to do a heist. And then I saw a tweet at one point that was something about Harlem Renaissance fantasy heist. And I was like, ooh. And I didn't know what the heist was going to be. I didn't know what they were going to steal. I didn't have any characters. That was literally all I had. And so I started from there. And I was, I was thinking about New York and Harlem. But I live in Maryland. And I didn't want to go to New York. It was pandemic. I couldn't really go to New York. But I have you know lived in D.C., my family's from DC. And as I was doing research into the Harlem Renaissance era, I was just discovering all this amazing stuff that was happening in DC in the 20s that I didn't really realize was happening. And all of these Harlem Renaissance era figures who either were from DC or passed through DC. And I was mm -hmm. like, there's not enough 
books in DC. There's not a fantasy books or, you know, any kind of urban fantasy, anything like that, that takes place in the city that, you know, is basically my city. So that was kind of the beginning. And then I knew I had some archetypes of characters of black characters from that era. I wanted a Pullman Porter, you know, I wanted to deal with African-American folk magic so that the, the magic system is based on that. And then I, I was kind of listening to music. I was looking for inspiration anywhere I could find it. And then I figured out, okay, I want them to steal this magical ring. And I came up with this whole backstory of this ring that's originally from Africa that has these powers that's, you know, now it's threatening the community. And yeah, just kind of all came together really from the research and from that spark of not knowing anything to slowly figuring it out and then finding, you know, real historical figures that I wanted to put into the book from Langston Hughes and Carter Woodson to my main character, who's actually based on um, a real person that I found, like a little known person from history, not a famous person, but a person who had something extraordinary happen to her in real life. And then I kind of took her life off from there. And now then she became the mastermind of this heist, like a very unlikely mastermind of a heist. Yeah, that's what that's what's great about the book is she's very much like, unwitting like and I unwilling just fell she's dragged kicking and screaming honestly <laughs> yeah she's like i just fell into this shit <laughs> right. but she's the folk the folk magic is what really ties it together for me yeah. so that that was a really really cool element we'll we'll get into that a little bit later but jonathan for jati's wager you know you already had this uh universe sort of established with goodbye to the sun and the wind tide trilogy when you're approaching book two you know because tonally Book one and book two are quite different, yeah. but you are doing something where it's like you're pulling from history in the sense of the Trojan War and putting it in this sandbox of, of yeah. far future sci-fi. So what was your kind of uh, thought process going into this? Yeah. So it was the second book, like you said, and I had a character who was a secondary character in the first book who was going to become one of the two MCs in the second book. So I already knew I had that character running. And I brought another character forward who was young. And so what I what I kind of did was um, I had this anxiety about second books because a lot of people were telling me to worry about the second book, you know, and not, not writing. <laughs> I, I wrote my second book like this. I got lucky. My third book was my hard book. But mm. but everyone was like, oh, the second book, you can't let it drag. Don't let it slog. Oh, the second book. And I thought to myself, what can I go to that's going to have a lot of pace and movement? And I always liked heists. And I was like, I'm going to make a heist out of book two. And I just kind of preemptively decided that. And so what I did was I sandwiched a coming of age story and a heist together. And so what that did was it kind of used the heist and everything that happens to Ilo, the character, through the process of the book as the way of the coming of age arc, basically carrying itself through. And so the ups and downs happen as the heist plot happens. And so that that's how I got there. And yeah, I mean, I, I had used Greek sources for inspiration. So Antigone was book one with Goodbye to the Sun and the Eumenides was the third book. And it just happened to work out when I was thinking about things that I realized the Trojan horse, the myth of the Trojan horse is kind of a heist. The OG heist story, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of a heist. And so uh, I, I basically riffed off that. And, you know, I, I actually played a little bit off of the tensions between the abduction of Helen and other things like that as well, and Hector and Achilles, and threw that all in there. But in the end, we I did use the Trojan horse sort of analogy, but in a very futuristic sci-fi way. 